Item number, SCP-780, Object Class, Safe, Special Containment Procedures. SCP-780 must be kept in a locked steel box, 10 cm by 10 cm by 10 cm, with walls at least 1 cm thick. This box is to be kept on a 5 meter pedestal, at the center of a 20 meter by 20 meter concrete room. Individuals wishing to approach SCP-780 must submit to a full body search and may not bring plants, living or artificial, images of plants, descriptions of plants, or digital displays of any kind within 10 meters of SCP-780, except as part of a pre-approved test protocol. Individuals with plant tattoos are likewise forbidden from approaching SCP-780, except during testing. Description SCP-780 is a small bead, one centimeter in diameter, shaped like a rounded gem, with numerous facets and a hole at its center. It appears to be made of a clear, amorphous substance. Studies suggest it has a structure similar to that of polyvinyl chloride, but this does not account for its reaction to plants. While SCP-780 does not melt at temperatures exceeding 3500 Kelvin, cooling it to below 24K temporarily changes its structure into a crystalline form, allowing it to be damaged by blunt impacts. When a plant or representation of a plant, including artificial plants, photographs of plants, drawings and paintings of plants, particularly vivid textual descriptions of plants, or any of the above appearing on a screen of any sort, is placed within 10 meters of SCP-780. It begins to levitate and will fly towards the plant. How SCP-780 detects plants is unknown at this time. If restrained, SCP-780 will become increasingly agitated until the plant is removed from its radius. If allowed to come into contact with the plant, Hereafter, the host plant, SCP-780 will stick to it for a period of five seconds, at which time it will fall to the floor. Once it lays flat against the ground, it cannot be removed, except as noted below. Within ten minutes, a shoot will be seen growing from within the hole at the center of SCP-780. This will mature to a fully grown specimen of the host plant within 24 hours. This new plant is designated SCP-781. Even if the host plant was not a living, physical plant, SCP-781 will be, though in all other traits, color, height, general form, it will match the depiction of the host plant. SCP-781 has the same requirements for sun and atmosphere as the host plant, but does not have a root system, and therefore does not require water or any particular soil conditions. Despite lacking roots, SCP-781 will not fall over regardless of imbalance or pressure applied. Attempts to dig up the ground SCP-781 sits on result in data expunged. SCP-781 is equally susceptible to damage as the host plant. Anything which would kill the host plant will also kill SCP-781. Upon its death, it will rot unusually quickly, and SCP-780 may be retrieved. At maturity, each instance of SCP-781 produces new copies of SCP-780. In flowering plants, the copies are found at the base of each flower, usually replacing the ovary. In non-flowering plants, the copy replaces seeds, spores, or other such propagules. Each reproductive structure, flower cone spore capsule, produces exactly one copy of SCP-780. When SCP-781 portrays a plant species that does not undergo sexual reproduction, a single new copy of SCP-780 forms at the base of SCP-781. These new copies of SCP-780 will break out of SCP-781 and affix to the nearest plant not generated by SCP-780 or remain inert if no such plant exists within their radius. 
Flowers or seeds removed from SCP-781 before maturation contain smaller, misshapen copies of SCP-780, which do not react to plants in any way. Addendum 780A SCP-780 was recovered when flyovers of the Atacama Desert reported an odd strand of mangrove trees, where existing water should have been insufficient for their survival. Initial response from the Chilean government included a botanist carrying which included a picture of a rose bush on the cover. Upon approaching the site, multiple copies of SCP-780 flew toward the book, and the researchers fled. When they returned a day later, many more rose bushes were growing at the site. Communication between the research team and their contacts was intercepted by Agent M, who intervened on behalf of the Chilean government. Mobile Containment Task Force was dispatched, who used incendiary devices to incinerate all plants in the area. All instances of SCP-780 were retrieved, and all but one has been destroyed to reduce the risk of further growth. Addendum 780-B Experiment Log 780-A the following experiments were performed to evaluate the extent of SCP-780's abilities. Experiment 780-E1 Host Plant Sunflower Result Full-grown sunflower produced in 24 hours, with one new copy of SCP-780 within flower. Experiment 780-E2 Host Plant Photograph of sunflower used in Experiment 780-E1 Result. Resulting flower was identical to the one produced in Experiment 780-E1. Experiment 780-E3. Host plant. Painting of sunflower used in Experiment 780-E1. Result. Resulting flower was similar to the one produced in Experiment 780-E1, but slight differences. Number of petals, shades of color, showed it to be a copy of the painting not the original plant. Experiment 780-E4 Host Plant Painting of Sunflower with only a single purple petal rather than many yellow ones. Result Resulting flower matched that of the painting. Experiment 780-E5 Host Plant The word Sunflower Result No response. Experiment 780-E6 Host plant. A one paragraph description of a sunflower. Result. Resulting flower matched description in paragraph. Experiment 780E7. Host plant. A one paragraph description of a bush which produces chocolate bars. Result. Resulting bush shares physical appearance with description, but chocolate bars are in fact fruit, with a dark fleshy interior that according to D-Class testers, only has a passing resemblance to the taste of chocolate. Each fruit contains a copy of SCP-780, indicating that these fruits would normally contain seeds on their interior. Experiment 780-E8 Host Plant A one-paragraph description of a bush, which produces health bars which contain a week's worth of calories and nutrients in every bite. Result Resulting bush shares physical appearance with description, with the bars again being fruits, containing copies of SCP-780. Tests verify that these are fairly nutritious, with a wide variety of vitamins and minerals, but only contain slightly more sustenance than an ordinary fruit or vegetable. Further research on exploiting SCP-780 to provide variety in the site canteen, on hold pending approval. If we can make fruits as healthy as Brussels sprouts, but as tasty as strawberries, imagine the marketing possibilities. We just need to find a way to remove the copy of SCP-780 embedded at the heart of each fruit. Dr. Experiment 780-E9 Host Plant A one-paragraph description of data expunged. Result Data expunged Experiment 780-E10 Host Plant SCP-38 Result Resulting plant appeared identical to SCP-38, 
but lacked its ability to reproduce items touched to its trunk. Experiment 780E11 Host Plant SCP-143 Result Resulting tree identical in appearance with SCP-143. Bark has the same hardness as SCP-143, but pieces removed from SCP-781 lose this property and retain only the hardness typical of a Prunus ex yetoensis tree. Petals have no unusual properties. Experiment 780E12 Host Plant SCP-417 Result While exhibiting the outward appearance of SCP-417, fruit only contain more copies of SCP-780. Further testing on plant-like SCP objects is suspended, as their unique abilities do not appear to be reproduced. Dr. Lesson Complete If you missed the previous orientation, Go watch SCP-779, Brownies, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.